With each new day that the sun shines, I find myself more and more inspired to lean into my creative side. And I truly believe that spring is such a beautiful time to indulge yourself in the activities that you feel most content doing. So over the past couple of weeks, I've allowed myself to do just that. idea what I'm doing here. I have never done this before, but I guess today I'm feeling ambitious, so I am going to make some bread. <laughs> Sometimes you just wake up in the morning and decide you really want to do something, even if it's something that you've never even tried before, and then you just let yourself do it, which is exactly what happened here. I woke up and we had no bread, so I just made the decision that I was going to make some. I've never really had a lot of skills when it comes to cooking and baking, but in recent years, I've decided that I want to give myself at least the chance to try. I feel like as we get older, trying new things can be a little bit harder because we fall into different routines and we live our lives the same way every single day. And trying new things can mean that it's going to take more time than usual or it's hard to fit into a busy schedule. But I definitely feel a sense of pride when I try to bake something and and I work on my baking skills and something ends up turning out good. There's just a certain type of special feeling like accomplishment when you know that you can make something with your own two hands. And if you don't know how to do something because you've never done it before, there is no shame in asking for help or looking up a YouTube tutorial because I had never kneaded bread before, or at least not that I could remember, and I did not know how. I looked it up and I figured it out. And I think that's all that matters. Honestly, they both look really good and I think it's still like a tiny bit warm so the bread like the butter should get like melty here we go mm -hmm. yep I'm pretty happy with that I feel like the dangerous thing with like homemade bread though is that like it's so much better than like store-bought bread that you go through it so much faster but Mmm, that is good bread. Mm -hmm. 
there's something about the brand new spring foliage that always makes my heart crave a good Studio Ghibli film. The art within them is just so beautiful and I feel like a lot of them take place during the spring and summer. So my mind often wanders to those films when I think of beautiful spring scenery. This past Christmas, my good friend Gina gave me this stack of Studio Ghibli postcards, so I decided to sort through them and find a couple of postcards that had some beautiful foliage and pluck them out and use them as some inspiration for a painting. Painting is a hobby that I genuinely enjoy, however, I don't often find a lot of time to sit down and do it. Often when I make art, I'm using reference images and trying to completely copy an image exactly as it's supposed to be, which leads it to taking a very long time to try and get perfect. So I wanted to start getting into the practice of painting things not exactly as they are. And I feel like the perfect starting point for that is foliage, the greenery, trees, leaves, grasses. They're all things that you can definitely get the idea of what they are without them having to be perfectly as you see them in a reference image. Since today I was using Studio Ghibli as my inspiration, I decided I would turn on a Studio Ghibli playlist on Spotify and fully lean into the Studio Ghibli vibe while I was painting. I actually really enjoyed doing this even more than I thought I would. It was a lot of fun to be able to just take the pressure off of creating art and painting foliage is something that's super easy. I honestly feel like anyone could do it. It's just dabbing and painting strokes and adding different shades of color until you're happy with what you have. And my favorite part of painting this was peeling the tape off. I love having the crisp white border around the painting and I hope that in the future I can find a lot more time to sit down and do more paintings like this. Yes. Photography is something that I've been doing for over 10 years and in those years I have always done self-portraits. I do my best to be resourceful and find whatever I have around the house to create different scenes for my photography and I think it's really interesting to see how much my photography has evolved over the years. I think that we as people change so much in a small amount of time that we don't even really notice it but through taking photos year after year I feel like it's really evident how much a person Person can change or even just how much an art style can change. When I look back at my Instagram feed and I can see all of my photography laid out next to each other, I can scroll down and when I look at certain photos and look at how I've edited them, it kind of takes me back to the times in my life when I took those photos. It's kind of like when a song is on the radio constantly and then years down the road you listen to that song and then you think of that one summer or that one memory you have associated with that song and it really takes you back. That's kind of how I feel with my editing style and my photography because of how it's changed over the years. I've been trying really hard to focus on adding more feeling into my photography versus just setting up a pretty photo, which there's also absolutely nothing wrong with. Those are super fun to create as well. But I think my goal going forward is to create photos with more feeling. I heard a quote a while back and I'm not sure who originally said it or where I even heard it from, but it went something like, art wasn't meant to be beautiful, it was meant to make you feel something. And that definitely kind of has stuck with me over the last little while. It's definitely been a huge factor in me wanting to add more feeling into my photos. But another thing that also always inspires me in my photography is the seasons. I definitely feel a change in my photography when spring and summer roll around because I just want to shoot outside. I don't have to really curate any sort of setting because the nature of the outside world is already beautiful enough. It also has a pretty large influence on the props that I use in my photography. In the spring, I have a very large calling to use pops of color and flowers in my photos. Photography for me has just been a really fun adventure of self-expression and creation. And I think if anyone out there is interested in shooting photos, but they might be a little bit scared to, I feel like it is something that kind of takes a little bit of getting used to. But once you kind of get into the swing of it, once you're in that mode of taking photos, it's actually really exciting and a really fun process to go through. 
you really do kind of get to know yourself in a whole new way on a very high level. Editing photos of yourself can be a little bit intimidating, but I feel like you're always gonna know yourself better than anyone else, so you'll probably be able to take the best pictures of you you've ever seen. sun feels so good. It is a little bit windy, so I hope that it's not too crazy for the audio. I wanted to show you guys some of the books that I picked up recently because honestly, used bookstores and thrift stores for books have quickly become like my favorite thing to shop for. And recently I picked up a couple, so I just thought I would show you and kind of have a little chat about what I'm reading. This is the book I'm reading currently. I got it last weekend at a used bookstore. It's called Carry On by, I don't know how to say this person's last name, but Rainbow Roll. I'm just gonna hope that that's how you say the last name. I'm probably like, a third of the way in. I'm for sure getting some Harry Potter vibes from this because there's like magic and a magic school and like a chosen one that's gonna have to defeat the bad guy. According to the back, there's supposed to be a little bit of like romance in it. I haven't really gotten that far yet, but I like the size of it. I like the feel of it in my hands. So, and it's a fun little read so far. So I'm excited to finish the rest of it. I think there's like two more books in this series. This was actually on my Goodreads for a little while and I almost took it off because I was like, um, I don't know if that's something that's like on the top of my list. And I do have a lot of things that are on my list of things to read. So I literally was about to take it off, but then I was like, oh, I'll just leave it on there just in case. And then like a couple days later, we went to the bookstore and it was there. So I, I kind of just like took it as a sign that I should get it because I was feeling really indecisive when we were there and I just got it. So, so far, I'm not disappointed yet. Um, about like two or three weeks ago, I went to a different used bookstore, which was really exciting. And I was pleasantly surprised. I was expecting like stacks and stacks of like old, dusty, dirty, crusty books. But they actually had like a lot of like um, fun, like new titles. So I picked up this one, Girl, Serpent, Thorn. I haven't started it yet, but it is kind of like, it's a fantasy book, which I've really been into lately. Mostly like the romanticy, like it's gotta have a little bit of romance to entice me, you know? For some reason, that's just what I like to read. This one's a little bit smaller than the last one. I really liked the cover of it. No, so I'm, I'm reading the words princess and cursed. It just sounds like a good, fun little adventurous book. So a couple weeks ago, actually, when was this? It might've even been a couple months ago now. I don't remember. Me and my friend went on a huge like thrift store shopping trip like we went to like 10 different thrift stores and like it was like it was like a 10 hour thrift store day and the only thing that I bought was these two books. Unfortunately, they didn't have the first one so I only got the second and the third. They were priced really really well like this one was only $1.50 because there is a little rip in the front and I think this one was like $3.50 because it was in good condition but these go for like I think like 20 something dollars on Amazon. I think for the three of them, it's like 60 bucks. So I was pretty happy with the price, even though they didn't have the first one there, but I've been reading the first one. I think this is like kind of a new thing for Spotify Canada, but now you can listen to up to 15 hours of audiobooks, like with your Spotify premium. So I've been listening to the first one. I think I'm about 60% of the way. It's like super romance heavy. So there's this grandpa, he creates this like big theme park. It's kind of like Disney, but it's called Dreamland and he passes away and like the brothers have to do a few things in order to get their shares of the theme park. Um, it's super romance heavy. I feel like it's like 80% romance, like 20% other stuff. It's like, I feel like it's a really like easy read, especially if you like romance, which I do. The reviews on everything I feel like are so divided and like there are, there are books that I love, but people on Goodreads have said they're total garbage. So like, it's so hard to like judge whether or not it's gonna be a good book, but I seen these on TikTok and a lot of people really liked them. So since they were at the thrift store, I was like, I'm gonna grab them. I have to say there's something like kind of special about finding the books like used somewhere out in the wild versus just like going to Amazon or going to the bookstore and buying them. It almost feels like it's just like, if you find it somewhere in the wild, it's like you're meant to have it. Like the universe is sending you signs that it's time for you to have this. I don't know, maybe it's just like a thrill of the chase kind of thing for me, but I love, like, I think I prefer going into used bookstores versus, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like going into a brand new bookstore. It's very, very exciting. But there's also something about the thrill of the chase of finding books that you just, you just don't know what you're going to find when you go into a used bookstore, you know? So yeah, that is what I have 
currently on my reading stack. I have many, many more books on my TBR currently. And if you have any book recommendations, I really like romance and romanticy and fantasy novels. So if you have any really, really good ones you'd like to recommend, please let me know. Mm -hmm.